Now let's proceed to our study of God's Word this afternoon. And again, ang theme natin ay still the same for this month, following Jesus, radical discipleship. And for the past weeks, uh, we have been emphasizing that as believers, uh, the moment we accepted Christ as our personal Lord and Savior and believed in Him, I, we have also made a decision or a commitment to be a follower of Christ. So every believer, I ano, follower dapat ng Panginoon. Sabi nga natin, discipleship is not optional for a believer. A true believer in Christ is a disciple or a follower of Christ. So kung, if we profess that we are believers, if we profess that we are Christians, then dapat we are pursuing Christ in our life. We are following Christ sa buhay natin. In other words, believing in Christ also means following Christ. Okay? Believing in Christ also means following Christ. So if you say you believe Christ, you will and you must follow Christ. So means follow Christ. Follow Christ. Okay? Now, what does it mean to be a follower of Christ? Ito yung pinag natin for the past few weeks. And if you remember, I mentioned a few weeks ago that a follower of Christ is an eager learner of Christ. So pag sinabi natin, I am a follower of Christ, ibig sabihin, I am a learner of Christ. Okay? Um, student ako ng Panginoon. And um, excuse me. a good follower, a good disciple is a good learner. Okay? Eagerly learning, listening, and learning from the Master, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay? So, dapat ganun yung attitude natin palagi. Every time we, at, we are at the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ, every time we would, He would speak to us, either through our personal meditation, as, through this, like this, when we, every time we would study God's Word, every time we would enter the presence of God, dapat we need to have that humility, that attitude of humility. Alala nyo? Kasi unless we are humble, we would not learn, right? So we must always have that humility before the Lord Jesus Christ so that when He speaks, we will be able to learn, listen and learn, learn from Him. Sabi nga natin, dapat, sabi natin, ang Panginoon ang potter, tayo ang ano, clay. So He cannot mold the clay, He cannot mold us unless we are what? Soft and moldable. Di ba? Pag matigas tayo, uh, pag sinubukang i-mold ng Panginoon niya, masakit. Okay? Kaya minsan kailangan ano, palambutin. Minsan kailangan i-break ng Panginoon so that we would really learn from Him. Okay? So, uh, we must be good students, good learners of Christ so that we would be able to uh, to become the person that Christ wants us to be. Okay? That is a follower of Christ, a learner of Christ. Okay, so, a follower of Christ is a learner of Christ. Secondly, a follower of Christ is loyal to Christ. Pastor Boy emphasized last week, if you remember, that as Christians, we are what? Soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Diba? We are soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as soldiers, what do we do? We fight the good fight of faith. Okay? As our commander-in-chief, the Lord Jesus Christ, leads us into... into uh, battle. So we are to be good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as good soldiers, we must be loyal to our commander-in-chief, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we fight the good fight until the end. Okay? Uh, if you would remember, I listened to Pastor Boy's uh, preaching. He said that good soldiers are what? Finishers. Uh, you know, five qualities of a good soldier. Yung isa doon, lahat letter F, di ba? One is what? He is a finisher. In other words, we fight the good fight of faith until the end. We protect our faith. We defend our faith. We proclaim, we preach our faith uh, as long as we still have breath. Okay? Hanggat may pagkakataon tayo, we are to fight the good fight of faith. In other words, a true follower of Christ doesn't give up Christ easily. Okay? As I've been kanina, Brother Joanne, ano? we should not give up. Why? Because God's grace is always what? Sufficient. There's no reason for us to give up. There's no, for, there's no reason for us to surrender because Christ is with us and He has given us the victory and He promised us that His, His grace will sustain us until the end. Okay? So a good soldier is what? Loyal to Christ. Sabihin sa don't give up. Sana yun prayer natin. I remember 
uh, Peter, the Apostle Peter, okay? Uh, when Jesus said, you will betray me, ano sabi ni Peter sa Panginoon? Hindi, Lord, that will never happen. Pero when the time came, ano nangyari? He denied Jesus Christ, what? Three times, right? So, may God's grace sustain us so that when the time comes that we are to be tested but the thing as far as our faithfulness to our master is concerned may his grace be enough so that we would be able to stand up for Jesus right? so we sometimes you stand up for Jesus okay so a follower of Jesus is uh, number one a learner of Christ pangalawa he is loyal to Christ and pangatlo titignan natin ngayong hapon sa ating pag-aaral a follower of Christ is a likeness of Christ. Okay? A follower of Christ is a likeness of Christ. And open your Bibles to Mark chapter 1, verse 16 to 18. Our main passage for our series. Mark chapter number 1, verses 16 to 18. And sabi dito ng salita ng Panginoon, And as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. Verse 18, They immediately left their nets and followed him. Now again, dito sa text natin, makikita natin na ano, si Jesus Christ extending the invitation to his first disciples. And nabanggit particularly kung sino yun. Sino yung first disciples na tinawag dito ng Panginoon? Si Simon, which he named Peter, and then si, yung kapatid niya na sino? Si Andrew. Okay? So, Jesus was extending the invitation, extended the invitation to Simon and Andrew. He said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Now, sabi natin last time, when Jesus said, follow me, he was saying to Simon and Andrew, come behind me. Diba? Lala nyo? Okay? It means, um, come behind me, watch me, observe me, and learn from me. That's where we got the principle that the disciple is a learner of Christ because Jesus was saying to them, I will teach you, I will make you become what? Fishers of, of men. Okay? Now, another thing that we can see here in the invitation of Jesus Christ is that he said in the second part, he said, follow me or come behind me. And then said the Lord, I will make you become, what? Fishers of men. Now, if you look at that invitation ng Panginoon, I will make you become fishers of men. Ay napaka, it's very interesting for Jesus to say to Simon and Andrew, I will make you become fishers of men. Okay? Now, the question is this. If, if you would look into this passage, first of all, probably you would ask, why did Jesus use the term fishers of men? I will make you become what? Fishers of men. So when Jesus said, I will make you become fishers of men, what do you think Jesus was trying to say to Simon and Andrew? Bakit niya sinabi, bakit niya ginamit yung term na I will make you become fishers of men? Anong ibig sabihin niya doon? Well, there might be some implications on why Jesus used that term fishers of men. But I would, what, this is what I would like to point out here this afternoon. Sino ba si Simon at si Andrew? Who were they? Okay, the Bible says that they were what? Fishermen. Saan natin makikita na yun? Verse number 16. And as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were what? They were fishermen. Now, if you're a fisherman, what do you do? You fish. You catch fish, right? In other words, Simon and Peter, uh, Simon and Andrew were fishermen. They were catching fish. That was their what? Livelihood. That's what, that's, that was their what? Profession. That's what Peter and Andrew and even James and John did for a living, okay? They were catching fish for a living. It was their business uh, during that time. So Simon, Peter, and Andrew were fishermen. They were not 
fishers of men. But they were fishers of fish. <laughs> okay? Uh, they were fishermen, right? But notice Christ's invitation. I mean, I will make you become fishers of men. Okay? So, if you look into it, it is implied here that See the bound fishers of men. Some there is someone who is a fisher of men, right? If there's a business of catching fish, <clears throat> then there is a business of catching what? Men. Because Jesus Christ said, "You're ca catching fish right now, but I will make you become what? Catchers of of men. So you will no longer fish for fish." But this is what I will do. Follow me, and I will cause you to catch uh, men. Okay, parang sinasabi ni... <coughs> parang sinasabi ni ng Panginoon, actually. Kung titignan mo yung Panginoon, sino ba ang Panginoon? Jesus Christ is actually a what? God, of course. He's the Son of God. And what does He do? What was His business? Okay. Jesus Christ said that He came to seek and to save those who were what? Those who were lost. So in other words, Jesus Christ was focused on what? Seeking men that are lost and bringing them to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay, bringing them to God through Him. So in other words, if you look at Jesus Christ, He was a what? A fisher of men. Tama? Because His main purpose on earth, why He came, is to what? Catch men and bring them into the kingdom of God. Tama? So when Jesus Christ said, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men, para ano rin, para imply, para sinasabi dito ng Panginoon, follow me and I will make you become like me. My business is to do the Father's will. My business is to bring people to the into the kingdom to know God through me, sabi na Pahino, Jesus Christ, okay? And I want you, Simon and Andrew, to be involved in the same kind of business. Yes, you're now in the business of catching fish, pero parang sinasabi na Pahino ito, I want you to be like me. I want you to be in the business of what? Catching men and bringing them into the kingdom of God. Okay? So, parang sinasabi dito na Panginoon, be like me. Join me in this business of bringing, ushering men into the kingdom of God. Be like me, be fishers of men. So, nung sinabi na Panginoon, come follow me, and I will make you become fishers <coughs> of men. Ano naging response ni Simon and Andrew? Okay? Sabi sa verse 18, immediately what? They left their nets and followed him. In other words, I believe that they got the idea, right? When Jesus said, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men, Peter and Andrew were very much willing to be like Christ, to be involved in the business of what? Bringing men into the kingdom of God. So that's why right after they heard the invitation of Painon sa kanila, Follow me now, we'll make you become fishers of men. Sabi ng salita ng Panginoon, immediately they left their nets and followed Him. In other words, they wanted to be like Christ. They wanted to be fishers of men. They wanted to be involved in the business of God, which is ushering people into His kingdom. They immediately left their nets and followed Him. And this is the principle that we can see here. Let's read it all together. Ready? Begin. A true follower of Christ emulates Christ. Ano ibig sabihin emulate? Ginagaya, or another word for that is imitate Christ. Okay? So when, when Simon and Andrew left their nets and followed Christ, it's like they were saying, Yes, Lord, I want to be like you. I want to be involved in the business of God, which is ushering men into His kingdom. Okay? And that's what discipleship really is all about. Okay? Discipleship is all about imitation or emulation. The reason why a disciple would spend so much time 
an effort with his master, listening to him or learning from him is because one of the things he wants is he wants to be like his master. Tama? If you're a true disciple, you would like to be your master or your teacher as much as possible. You see, true discipleship is beyond just simply transferring information. Means kasi ang isip natin, pagdating sa Christian discipleship, ah, once you go through the lesson and you know the truth, that's okay. But it's beyond that. It's beyond just merely passing on information. True discipleship is about imitating our Master, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's why when Jesus Christ extended the invitation to us to follow Him, it's also an invitation for us not just to learn from Him, but also an invitation to be like Him. It's an invitation for us to imitate Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1 says, Paul writes, Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. So he imitates Christ. 1 Thessalonians 6, 1, And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. Ephesians 5, 1, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. So in other words, if you're a disciple of Christ, if we are disciples of Christ, and we are followers of Christ, we must be imitators of Christ. We must imitate Christ. Okay? Dapat ano tayo? Imitation tayo ng ating ano? Panginoong Heso Kristo dito sa lupa. Now, pag sinabi natin imitation, usually, negative ang idea niyan sa panahon natin ngayon. Di ba? Okay? Pag sinabi yung imitation, galing yan saan? Okay. okay. And pag imitation, ay ano? Teke. Okay. Ibig sabihin, hindi ano? Hindi totoo. Meron mga imitation bags. Ano pa? Imitation shoes. Imitation cell phones, iPhones. Di ba? May iPhone, may my phone. Ano pa? Your phone, no? <laughs> Kung ano, ano, di ba? Imitation of perfumes. Marami yan dito. And marami pang iba. Okay? So, paano mo malalaman na isang bagay imitation? Kasi minsan yung mga magagaling mag-imitate talaga, no? Pag tinignan mo, parang at first glance, ay ano, hindi mo makikita ang difference. Right? Eh, okay, parang original to, ah. Pero bakit ang mura? LV. Lumang vag. <laughs> diba? Yung sabihin, sa, sa, at first glance, you would not notice it, but if you would look into it, if you would look into the details, doon mo makikita na may ano, ay may konting difference pala. Pero sa umpisa, ay para hindi mo makikita yun. Okay? So, that's why, sabi nga natin, it's better to buy what? Original. Ano yung tagline natin sa Philippines? Suportahan natin ang sariling natin. Diba? Wag yung pirata. Dapat ano? Original. <coughs> Kasi yung, yung imitation, ano ba, sapatos, uh, pagkagamit mo na isang beses, una mukhang Jordan, pero pagkatapos mong gamit na isang beses, mukhang Spartan na. Okay? Kaya, lugi ka rin doon. Okay? So dapat, uh, mas maganda yung original, di ba? So, usually when we encounter the word imitation nowadays, it's negative. Okay? But, in the Christian realm, the word imitation is actually positive, okay? Um, imitation is a good thing, okay? We want to be like Christ. We want to be the exact copy of the Lord Jesus Christ as much as possible, okay? We want people to say when they look at us, you're like Christ. That's the greatest compliment that we can ever have, receive. From a person, na sasabi nila, parang ano, parang may naalala ko pag nakikita kita. Sino? Si Judas. <laughs> Sana hindi si Judas, ano? Kundi sino? Parang... Barabas. <laughs> si Cristo. Yeah? That's the greatest compliment that we can ever have or receive. Now, the word imitate in the Greek is mimites, where we get the English word mimic. And every time this word is used in the New Testament, it always, it's always used in a positive sense, okay? It speaks of a positive imitation that arises 
by admiring the pattern set by someone worthy of emulation, according to Helps Word Studies, okay? So, when you try to mimic someone, sabi, sabi nila, you try to get as close as possible to the real thing. You may not be exactly the same as the real thing, but you try to be as close as possible to the real thing. So when we say we imitate Christ, we may not be exactly like Christ because we will never be exactly like Christ because He is the Son of God. We cannot be everything exactly <clears throat> like Christ, but we try to uh, be like Him as close, as much as possible as, as we can. Okay? Why? Because He is worthy of our emulation. He is our perfect example. He is our great model. And as disciples and followers of Christ, it should be our desire to be like our Master, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay? Ibig sabihin ba naman, magpapabako tayo sa cross, I want to be like Christ. So, may, may mga taong gano'n, di ba? Kaya tuwing mahal na araw, sa Pampanga, alam ko marami yun, di ba? Parang nagpapabako talaga. Bakit? Sabi nila, kasi, ginawa to ni Cristo, so, gagawin ko rin to. Although, that's uh, self-inflicted pain or sufferings, right? But if Christ would call us to martyrdom and die in a manner like that, we should be willing to what? To embrace it, right? Sabi ha ni Apostle Paul, be becoming like Him even to the point of death. But hindi naman to the point na parang, sige, papapako na ako. Nagagawin natin yung sa sarili natin. That's not the right thing, okay? But as disciples and followers of Christ, we are to live and act just as Christ did. Remember the definition I shared to you a few months ago about Christ-likeness? What is Christ-likeness? Well, Jim George said, Masayin natin. Ready? Begin. It means to live and act as Christ lived and act. Okay? We are to think like Christ thought. We are to speak like Christ spoke. We are to love like Christ loved. We are to forgive like Christ forgave. We are to um, give as Christ gave. We are to be humble as Christ was humble. We are to be like Christ in the way we live and in the way uh, we act. Okay? We must be like Christ. So a true follower of Jesus Christ has this great desire to be like his master Jesus Christ. He desires to live and act like Christ. So if we are true followers of Christ, dapat yung desire na yun nandito sa puso natin. Diba? Gusto ko maging katulad ng aking Panginoon. That is my aim. That is my goal. That is my uh, desire. That one day, I, I, that's the reason I move forward in my Christian life. That's the reason why I meditate on the Word of God. That's the reason why <coughs> I belong to a church and get involved with a, it, with a church because I want to know Christ so I can be like Christ in the way I live and in the way I I act. Okay? Hindi dapat tayo maging imitators. Im Minsan kasi pag tinap, sino ba ang Ano, pag tinignan natin sa sarili natin, sino ba ah, sa tingin nyo ang ini-imitate natin? Minsan kasi, sino ba ini-imitate natin? Si Asher. Asher. Ang pag-anap, pati yung lakad, pati itsura, di ba? Minsan ginagaya natin, sino ba? Miley Cyrus. Meron pa Christian. Sana wala Christian na. Pero pag tinignan yung kabataan, di ba, especially, if they try to imitate someone, they want to be to look like that person as much as possible. The way they dress, the way they look, the way they speak, diba? Like for example, diba, sa basketball, tayo mga nagdaro, diba? Idol natin si Lebron James, kunyari, or Michael Jordan, right? We want to be like them. So what do we do? When we play, we try to copy their moves. We try to imitate them because we want to be one. Like them. Okay? So, as believers, dapat he, ang ini-imitate natin, wala iba kundi ang Panginoong Iso Cristo. Right? We are to imitate Christ in the way we live, in the way we act. Because He is our Master and we are His disciples. We are His followers. 
Romans 8.29. Open your Bibles to Romans 8.29. Romans 8.29 says, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to what? To be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Okay, so God, in his perfect knowledge, from the very beginning, has called us unto salvation. He has appointed us unto salvation. And even before the foundations of the world, as he has appointed us unto salvation, he also appointed us to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. So from the very beginning, the reason why God saved you and me, ang goal ng Panginoon ay ano? Makonform tayo sa ano? Sa image na ating Panginoon. Kaya sabi ni Apostle Paul sa Ephesians 2.10, For we are God's what? Workmanship, masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Sabi sa katabi nyo, you are a masterpiece. Ibig sabihin, yan yung goal ng Panginoon. The moment we conform to the image of His Son, I don't know. Then na accomplish ng Panginoon yung purpose niya sa sa buhay natin. Okay? It is God's intention that every believer, every follower of Jesus Christ would be conformed to the image of His Son, Jesus Christ. Now, how do we conform ourselves to the image of Christ? Well, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 3.18, again, And we all, with unveiled face, Beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Okay? So sabi dyan, we are conformed to the image of Jesus Christ by being what? Transformed. Are we conformed already to the image of Christ? Perfectly? Not yet. But our goal is that we would be what? transformed into the image of Christ from one degree of glory to another. Okay? The word transform in the Greek is metamorphim, metamorphometa from metamorpho <coughs> morpho morph, morpho oh, more, where we, uh, metamorphosis in, in the Greek and it's translated uh, uh, in English. Uh, that's where we get, we get the English term metamorphosis. Okay. Now, there are a couple of things that we can see here in this passage. And I would just like to emphasize a few things as we close. First of all, being transformed into the image of Christ is progressive. Being transformed into the image of Christ is progressive. The verse says that the more we behold Christ, the glory of Christ, the more we are being transformed from one degree of glory to another. So, ang transformation natin ay ano? Dapat progressing from one degree of glory to another. Okay? The more we see Christ, the more we behold Christ, the more we are being transformed. So, yung growth natin dapat, yung transformation natin, should be from one level of the degree of the glory of Christ to another. In other words, dapat, sa isang disciple ng Panginoon, the more we grow older in the faith, dapat the more we are what? Progressing in our transformation or conformation, conformity to the image of Christ. Okay? Dapat habang tumatanda tayo sa pananampalatayan natin, mas nagiging ano, conform tayo sa sa image ng ating Panginoon. Okay? The older we become as a Christian, the more we need to be Christ-like in our life. Tama? Okay. So, uh, transformation is progressive. Secondly, being transformed into the image of Christ requires perseverance. Sabi dyan, beholding the glory of the Lord, we must behold the glory of the Lord <clears throat> glory of the Lord for us to be transformed into the same image. In other words, being Christ-like doesn't happen automatically. Being Christ-like does not happen automatically. We must do something. And ano dapat natin gawin according to the verse? If you want to be transformed, you must what? Huh? Behold the glory of the Lord. You must behold. Okay? So, 
Transformation takes place when we do something, when we behold the glory of the Lord. And beholding the glory of the Lord is a continuous lifetime process for a believer of, or a follower of, of Jesus Christ. In other words, if you want to be Christ-like, you must see the glory of Christ through your spiritual disciplines. You cannot be like someone if you don't behold or see or know who you want to become. So if you want to be like Christ, you must behold Christ and the splendor of His glory. Okay? So being transformed into the image of Christ is progressive and it requires perseverance. And then lastly, based on the verse, being transformed into the image of Christ is a great privilege. Why is it a great privilege? Because if you look at 2 Corinthians 3.18, it says in the first part, and we all with what? With unveiled face. What does that mean? Tell me, Joe. And we, pertaining to the believers, we all with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord. Ano ibig sabihin nun? It means that what? We believers have the privilege of what? beholding or seeing the glory of the Lord. Why? Because the veil has been what? Removed. That's why sabi, we with unveiled face, ibig sabihin, walang ano, walang cover. Yeah? Pag may cover ang ating mukha, ano ang nangyayari? Hindi ko kayo makikita. Di ba? Hindi ko makikita yung mga kagandang kagupuhan nyo. Di ba? And lalo na, hindi nyo makikita yung kagupuhan ko. Di ba? Kasi what? Make cover. But, sabi dyan, but the veil has been removed. So in other words, as believers, we have this great privilege of what? Seeing the glory of Christ. If you look at, go back to verse number 16, sabi dyan, but when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. So in other words, believers, we believers have, have this great privilege of beholding the glory of Christ. We can know Christ. We can know His glory and majesty. There's no veil, there's no cover, there's no hindrance for us to behold the glory of God. And once we behold the glory of God, sabi that we will experience transformation sa buhay natin. We have this freedom to know Christ and see His glory. Okay? In other words, there's no reason for us to be not Christ-like in our life. Tama? Kasi wala nang hinder si kung ang Panginoon, tinanggal niya na yung veil para makilala natin siya, makita natin yung glory niya, siya na mismo nagtanggal ng hindrance para hindi tayo maging katulad na ating Panginoon. Then the question is, what then hinders us from being like Christ? If the veil has been removed, then every believer must know Christ, must see the glory of Christ, and the moment we behold the glory of Christ, we will be transformed into His image from one degree of glory to another. If God has removed the veil, then why is it that sometimes many of us are having a hard time being transformed into the image of Christ? You know why? Well, probably one of the reasons that we put a veil over our hearts and our eyes spiritually. That's why we cannot see and behold the glory of Christ. Someone said, Where corrupt lusts or inordinate affections are indulged unto, where they are continually mortified, where any one sin hath a perplexing prevalency in the mind, what will happen? Faith will be so far weakened thereby as that it can neither see nor meditate upon this glory of Christ in a due manner. In other words, if there's sin in our hearts, it puts a veil so that we cannot see the glory of Christ. We cannot behold the glory of Christ in a due, right way, in a right manner. Then he continues, this is the reason why the most are so weak and unstable 
in the performance of this duty, yet are almost utterly unacquainted with it. The light of faith in the minds of men being impaired, clouded, darkened by the prevalency of unmortified lusts, it cannot make such discoveries of this glory as otherwise it would. In other words, why are Christians sometimes having a hard time to be like Christ? It's because they have put a veil. And what's that veil? Sin. Sin has clouded their hearts and their minds so that, so that they cannot really see and experience and behold the glory of of Christ. As the author said, their hearts are being impaired and clouded by sin. That's why it cannot make such discoveries of the glory of Christ. This is probably the reason why sometimes, you know, even we listen to sermons, even when we study the Word of God, means that we cannot behold the glory of Christ. That's why we are not being transformed into the image of Bakit? Kasi kahit minsan parang even though if we listen to so many sermons, we spend time listening and studying the Word of God, we don't experience transformations because there's sin in our hearts that prevent prevents us from beholding <coughs> the glory of our Lord. That's why confession is very much important. I emphasized this earlier sa devotion uh, before we started our worship celebration, Karina, um, sabi ko, um, believers must confess our sins before we even go to a period of real praises to God and the study of His Word. Because unless our hearts are free from sin, are cleansed and forgiven, even we would not be able to behold the glory of God. And we will not be transformed unless we behold His, His glory. Because if there's any unconfessed sin, then our spiritual minds and hearts will be impaired, clouded, darkened by the sins, and we won't be able to behold the glory of Christ. Thus, we will not experience true transformation. Uh, Emmanuel Eli, I shared this earlier, He's a former Satanist, and he became a believer in Christ. Uh, he, he said this, It is important that Christians obey the Word of God and not allow besetting sins to remain in their lives. Okay? Okay, natin. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> So as followers of Christ, as believers, ang goal natin is to what? Not just listen to the Word, but to obey the Word of God. And we should not allow sins to remain in our lives. That's why every time we enter the presence of God, there, there's a time for us to pray and ask God for cleansing and forgiveness. So that um, Christ's blood would cover our sins and would cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And the moment we are free from sin, we are cleansed from sin, okay, that's when we will be able to behold the glory of Christ. And once we behold the glory of Christ, the Bible says, then we will be transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to, to another. So as followers of Christ, remember we are to emulate Christ or imitate Christ. That's our goal in life, to be Christ-like. And we must behold the glory of Christ so that we will be transformed into His image. Let us live holy life so that nothing will hinder us from seeing and knowing Christ. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13-16. to 16. We'll close with this. 1 Peter 1, 13-16. Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, since it is written, 
and shall be holy, for I am holy. Are you a follower of Christ? Amen? Amen. I don't mean, are you a follower of Christ? Amen. Are you a follower of Christ? <laughs> so if you say that you're a follower of Christ, are you emulating Christ? Are you imitating Christ? Do you have that earnest desire to be more and more like Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, to live and act like Him? Then? Kapag wala yung desire na yun, pray sa Panginoon, Lord, cause me to have that great and intense desire, just like the Apostle would, to be like you. I would press on. This would be the mark of my life. I would press on toward that mark. Okay? To be like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Are you being transformed into the image of Christ? Are you progressing in your transformation? Are you becoming more and more like Him? Or para naging stagnant na lang? Or mahirap yung ano yun, know? we are becoming less and less like Him. Are you beholding the glory of Christ? Are you able, are you as, and as you behold Christ, are you able to see Christ and meditate on the glory of Christ? Or are you having a hard time? Because there are some sins that you have not yet confessed to the Lord. When we talk about sins, it can be hatred in your heart. It can be sins that you have committed in the past. Diba? And hindi lang minsan yung action, minsan even in your heart. Remember what Jesus said, right? If you have lust in your heart, you have committed the sin of adultery in your heart. If you have hatred in your heart, you have committed the sin of murder in your heart. So do we have sins in our hearts that are not confessed to the Lord? Confess it to the Lord, repent of it, and ask the Lord to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Bible says, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There's no sin that God cannot forgive. Right? If you would come to Him and confess it to Him. So that we would be transformed into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ from glory to glory as we behold His magnificent glory. So the challenge for us as followers of Christ, what? Let us be like Christ.